Hey guys, it's Ryan again. This is my Illustrator Basics course and we're talking about symbols. This is lesson module 9.2 where I'll show you how to create a symbol uh, using the uh, some artwork that I've already got created. As you can see I have these uh, little uh, circles here with artwork in it and if you switch here to this other view you can see that each of these little uh, symbols gets turned into a circular piece of acrylic. Uh, we're going to cut that out on the laser engraver. Um, it's similar to the project that we're going to do in the class where you'll be creating a game design. So again you can see how having this artwork that you see on the screen as a symbol uh, you can make multiple copies of these um, these pieces in your your layout your artwork and then have the engraver cut that out for you and we'll go through that um, we'll, we'll go through the process of creating these as symbols in this um, you may be wondering what these symbols are for these are the resource tiles um, I'm creating a custom settlers of Catan uh, maybe you're familiar with that game uh, so I'm creating a, a custom version for my wife and uh, for my kids for Christmas and uh, I'm using the the Adobe Illustrator symbols to create the uh, to create each individual little token here and then I'm also uh, creating those by laser engraving with a 50 watt um, rayjet laser engraver and uh, I may go through that process. I, I did get some footage of it while I was cutting it, so um, that might be another side project here on this, this channel. Um, as you can see, I've pasted each of these uh, symbols or these pieces of artwork on the uh, artboard, and we have the individual pieces of artwork as a group. So this is a group, this is a group, this is a group, this is a group, etc. Um, there's one for lumber, wheat, wool, ore, and brick. Those are the five resources that are in the uh, Settlers of Catan game. And um, I'm going to show you now how to convert those to symbols. Um, they need not be a completed group, so I could ungroup this if I wanted to. And now it's not a group. I can select individual, you know, pieces of that group or whatever. I'm going to undo that because I want to keep it a group. Um, and then I'll open my symbols panel and just simply drag that symbol into the symbols panel and then we get the symbol options and so I can change the name and in this case I'm going to call it lumber um, you may also know it as the wood uh, resource if you're familiar with the game um, and I'll call it token because that's what it is it's a, a, a token so anyway um, now the export type you can choose movie clip or graphic. It really doesn't matter unless you are creating this symbol for use in um, Adobe Flash. So for me, I'm just going to use it as a movie clip. Um, now the res registration is really important. Whether you want it centered or uh, upper right, upper left, lower right, lower left, etc. on the sides. Uh, you have those options and you define it now at this point as you're creating the the symbol I'm going to choose upper right or excuse me upper left because that is the um, you know the default for the corner here and how why this might be important um, if you are aligning things it's going to align based on that registration point so for example if it were if, if it was on the center and I aligned everything on center then it would show up with the center of this uh, this group or this this symbol on the you know the center point would be wherever I aligned it to I would rather have in this case the upper left simply for that purpose and I'll show you why 
Um, you can ignore the enable guides for nine slice scaling. Basically, that means um, if you are going to create something for a web layout, um, you can include those guides by you know, simply checking it. And then there's also align to pixel grid. Um, let's just leave that alone for this case. And um, we, we don't need to worry about it for, for this course or for this, this part of symbols. Um, if you're really interested, go look on Adobe Help has a great site um, and there's some more information on these options. So then I'm just simply click OK and then again I have the the original artwork that I had here and then I can pull copies or instances of that symbol you know as many as I'd like and lay them out on the board to prepare it to uh, be laser cut or laser engraved. Um, however, in this case, I can see one problem that I have, and so I'm going to double click on that while I have the selection tool. And again, it shows me you're about to edit the symbol definition. Any edits to the symbol will be applied to all its instances. Do you want to continue? I'm going to click OK. Again, make sure that you don't have this box checked, otherwise, you may accidentally, you know, have a uh, change to your symbol and you might not want that to be the case. So I'm going to isolate this outside circle here. And let's see if I can do that. Click isolate selected path. And now I am on the path. Um, the stroke here is a 0 0.628. I actually want that a whole lot smaller. I want it point uh, zero one and the reason is because my laser engraver needs a hairline uh, a, a, a super small um, a uh, super small thin stroke in order to uh, enable that to be cut otherwise it will be laser engraved and now you can see that reflected in all of these uh, all of these instances of that symbol. So I will go ahead and delete these and move on and create the symbol for the wheat. And so this will be the wheat token. And then the wool. And then the ore. And then, of course, the brick. All right. Now, um, you may have noticed as I created those symbols, I didn't do what I told you I wanted to do. Um, and let me show you that. Um, you can see when you select the symbol, the registration mark is this little plus symbol right here on the edge. And it's you can see that it's on that top upper left corner. But on the wheat, you can't see it very well because it's on the center. Now, if I were to align all of these, well, it didn't do it. It's supposed to go based on the registration point. How about if I, oh yes, here's what I, where it would go. So the registration X value, if I go 0 and 0, if you're doing it mathematically or you know using these, en these entrance points, it's going to go based on the symbol registration point. So that one was fine. If I want this one to be at 0, 0, that'll put it at the center point. And I, again, like I said, I didn't want that to be the case. So how do I fix that? I can simply, simply select the symbol here in the uh, symbols panel. And you would think, here's one thing that uh, I think Adobe needs to fix. If you go to uh, this little menu up here while a symbol is selected and hit symbol options, there should be that registration point here. I, we should be able to change the registration point based on 
uh, editing that symbol this way. Unfortunately, you can't do that, so double click that symbol and you'll see that symbol isolated just by itself. I'll select it all and then note that you can still see, uh, maybe I'll zoom in here. Well, that didn't help. Um, anyway, you can still see this registration point in the center. If you start to drag the artwork around, you can see that the registration point is now, you know, off center. So let me zoom back out and I'll show you what you can do to fix that. So we have the uh, symbol selected and we can see our reference point. Well, uh, at our, I mean our registration point. Let's go up here to the uh, control bar and you can see that the, we have the reference point options here and we can use the upper left, top middle, upper right, all of these. And remember again that is based on the artwork that we have selected. So if the artwork we have selected is the same reference point as our registration point, well it's not so let's move our artwork reference point to that registration point. The registration point says how far we are, away, how far our artwork is from that. And as you see, if I drag closer, I get closer to zero, zero. So let's just force that by zero here and zero there. And now we have that point, the upper right our upper left point of the artwork we have selected, selected, which is the whole symbol, at the same point as zero, zero. So now we've just changed our, our registration point for the symbol to be the new uh, zero, zero. So instead of being center like it was, in that case, let me zoom all the way back out, you can see that now if I select that, that crosshair of that registration point is at zero zero and the artwork is referencing off of that same zero zero point. Does that make sense? I'm hoping that it does. We'll have to do the same thing here with all of the others. So let me show you again how to do that. So if we move this this symbol, the wool here, to zero points and zero points. It again is on center so we'll double click that. Yes any edits to the symbol will be applied to all instances. We want to do that. Come up here select that artwork and move that. Make sure we're using the upper left corner reference point. Zero, zero and now it again is the same as those other ones. And so this is again why I wanted to do it that way in the beginning and uh, why I am you know not happy that I forgot to do that part. So let's do zero and zero and then enter into that symbol, select it all, zero zero and then I can exit and then on to the last one there okay now all of my symbols have the same reference point and the same uh, registration point Okay, so that will help me to make sure that everything is aligned perfectly when I go to do the laser engraving and I can adjust things, you know, micro uh, it, down to the, the point, the minutest level of the, of the design. Okay, so what can I do with these symbols now? I can select them all and we will align them all to that right side, or that left side, excuse me. And then I will drag one of them down, give it nice good spacing, and I can select them all and distribute them vertically. 
I think I may be able to fit a few more if I come a little closer. And even closer still. Okay, now that I have each uh, symbol on its own row, I can figure out, let's go uh, fit the artboard in the window, control Z, command Z, or excuse me, zero. <clears throat> and I'm going to do something um, that I've told you in the past not to do. And, I, and there's a reason, and I'll show you why. So what I'm going to do is make an incremental copy. Actually, I'm going to repeat that quite a few times. So again, to make a copy incrementally is while the object is selected, hold down Control or Command, and then also hold down Alt or Option, and then hit your arrow. And in this case, I'm going to hit the right arrow because I want to make a copy in that direction. And in fact, I'm going to go 13 times. So actually, uh, I have one, so I'm going to go 12 times because I think that's how big the artboard is. And I think I can fit 13 total uh, copies. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I'm going to take this top copy and move all the way over, holding down shift to constrain it, all the way over to that right edge. And then I can select each individual row of brick or of resource, you know, symbols and distribute. Okay, apparently there's too many. So I can take out um, one brick. Let's try that. And I can distribute vertical centers. Nope, still too many. So apparently it was fewer than 13. And looks like we're down to 10 now, I believe. Nope, still too many. Let's take out one more. And I'm just selecting one individual and hitting delete. All right, now they're spaced very well so I can I know I can take out one let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine there's only nine I thought there were more than that <laughs> all right so let's go backwards and do it the other way and again since there are symbols I can delete add whatever and it doesn't change anything to the artwork so let's grab these all again and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I have that top copy and I'll align that to the zero point over here. I think I missed it. There it is. I'll align to artboard. Yeah, I did. Okay. So then I'll select all the next ones and the next ones. And I know if you're familiar with Illustrator, you may be thinking, hey, there's an easier way. That is something I don't really want to discuss in this course. Um, we will talk about it in the next course when I get into the intermediate uh, Adobe Illustrator topic. And there's a reason for it. It's a little bit more difficult and more customizable. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the blend tool and the blend options. So uh, that's what I'm talking about. And anyway, I'm not going to discuss it any further. It's an easier way to make a bunch of copies on a row um, of, of one instance. So there we go. There's our, um, our completed resources laid out and ready to go to be cut on the laser engraver. So if you're looking at this, you may see a little bit of a problem here on the wheat. I've got a weird, uh, really thick red line there. And if, if you recall, I said the line had to be a lot thinner. So let's go in there and edit this. And so we'll zoom in, select that line, and we will make that stroke. 
thicker and then go back thinner again. I don't know why it's doing that. That's a that's that is some fluke. When I created this, um, I was using CS6, and for whatever reason, uh, it's it's adding that weird effect to the line. So if I select outline mode, it's it's obviously just gonna have that stroke. So anyway, oh well, now it moved. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, apparently I was wrong in my calculation. If you look there, there is some overlap and we can't have overlap because that will cut here and cut there and it will cut into the previous uh, symbol. So we'll go this way. I know why it was a different size. It's a different size because instead of letter size paper, I was using uh, 12 by 18, which is considerably bigger. So anyway, um, I'll just lay these out on here and we can modify when we get to the, uh, the game design project. And there we go. Uh, so that's using symbols and creating symbols and editing symbols and some things you need to be aware of while you are doing uh, or working with symbols. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and uh, we'll talk to you soon.